evening, everyone. Tonight, Darius Khalil Gordon, the Executive Director for the Met Council Research and Educational Fund. He's our, host, our, our guest tonight on Varieties of Brazil, and I'm Kevin Freer, your host. Hey, Darius, welcome. Thank you, Kevin. Welcome Thank you for the having program. me. I am so jacked up and excited <laughs> to see you. Me as well. Thank I, you. I know you're doing such great work for the city of New York. Thank you. Okay. So, this is now you're executive director, but how did you get to that to that point? And we'll explain exactly what what you do because you're very involved in the Met Council on Housing, mm -hmm. the Met Advice for Action, mm -hmm. and working with the tenants' rights and what needs to be done within the city's five boroughs to help people who have different plights. That's correct, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you get to that point? Yeah, so um, originally I'm uh, from Washington, D.C., born and raised. Uh, mm -hmm. My mom was a civil rights attorney. Oh. Um, she worked at the Library of Congress. Um, until I was 14, uh, she met a former Black Panther. Um, and so my world really got changed uh, after that. Mm -hmm. um, he asked me questions about why I thought the world was the way it was. Um, Howard University became a place we used to frequently go, um, museums as well. Um, and so my weekends really became uh, those of just fun to we're still gonna educate and learn some things yeah um, that really uh, started uh, and the seeds were really being laid um, even so much so that I went to Penn State uh, and he made me change my uh, major from telecommunications to African African American studies um, and in 2013 I moved to New York mm -hmm. uh, where I first uh, was working with the Working Families Party, okay. um, and then uh, I became a community organizer with Citizen Action of New York. Um, there we worked on uh, policies such as uh, fair elections, um, also raising the minimum wage, uh, which at the time wasn't 15 an yeah. hour, so helping folks get a little bit more money. Mm -hmm. um, and then also another piece of legislation that I'm really happy that we worked on at that time, which was raising the age, which is raising the age of criminal responsibility. Um, now, no longer are 16 or 17 year olds housed in adult facilities in New York State. Mm. Um, and so that was really big policy that I was really happy. Um, to, to work on. Um, from there, um, I, I will admit uh, I've had a pretty uh, fast paced uh, 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 jump to become an executive director um, where I was national organizer for the Center for Popular Democracy as well as the Gathering for Justice, which was Harry Belafonte's organization. Mm -hmm. um, I've done work all over the country from Alaska to Florida, California, um, D.C., um, where I uh, born and raised again. Um, and now, uh, over the past uh, five years, housing has been the issue that I've been working on. Uh, first, uh, in 2020, uh, I became the director of organizing for Churches United for Fair Housing in Williamsburg and Brooklyn, and, and uh, excuse me, and Bushwick. Mm -hmm. um, and then recently, my most recent job is the executive director for Met Council. Well, wow, that's quite an accomplishment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You really uh, put yourself out there in terms of, of organizing uh, for social justice and social causes. Yes. Uh, right? the, the last decade has been nothing but the work and really dedicated to that. And I really see myself in this. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I think that what you're going to bring to the to the Met Council in, in regard to um, Met Council on Housing and, and, and Tenants' Rights is, is it a sincere energy yes a real fire yes a dedication to to to, to help people in needs and, and uh, with the different problems that they might have yes but the Met Council is divided into two different parts correct and now you know based upon all the groundwork that you that you've laid you're working a little bit more on the macro level correct in addition to overseeing what happens uh, that you can do for people on the street. Correct, correct. Right. So, so um, you're you're absolutely correct, Kevin. Um, Met Council Research and Education is our 501c3 mm -hmm. portion of the organization, and Met Council Action is our 501c4 portion of the organization. Now, for those who might not know the differences between those, I'll start with just the 501c3, which is our issue-based side of work. So, for example, uh, this past legislative cycle, we were talking about good cause eviction. We wanted good cause eviction to be passed. For those who don't know, I will be very brief. Mm -hmm. We wanted landlords to basically have a good reason to evict someone.
someone. We don't want them just to be able to be, I want to move a family member into a unit. We don't want it to be, hey, well, we're going to make it hard for you to actually live here by not repairing the conditions of the apartment, making it decrepit. We're going to do those things so that you can move out. Maybe you are paying a certain amount we want to hire. Um, and so we wanted, we just wanted a good reason for landlords to get, uh, uh, to evict a tenant. Mm -hmm. um, we did not get that passed. We were not successful with that. Okay, However, we'll get to that in a minute. We will get to that. However, how we go about talking about the issue is what I really want to focus on. Okay. So the issue, good cause, we can educate people. We can talk about it on a C3. We can talk about the issue. We can talk about the pros, the cons. We can talk about uh, how we want to roll it out, the strategy. Mm -hmm. We can do that on the C3 side. On the C4 side, we can talk about the elected officials who we support to push that legislation forward. Now, that's really important to di differentiate because you cannot do that on the C3 side. That is a big legal thing that you do not want to get messed up in. Mm -hmm. So just making sure that you have a C4 to promote the candidates that you want to endorse to push those legislation policies forward is really important. So that's why we have those two arms. It's a great way of one hand washing the other and, and making sure that we're holding all forms accountable for the issues that we have on deck. So the responsibility that you've taken on and um, covers a lot of ground, right? Correct. So not only are you working with, with issues for housing and tenants rights on the, on the ground level, but you also now have the power to endorse and, and present your, um, your thoughts. Correct. Um, on what needs to be done legislatively Correct. in the electoral process by endorsing various candidates and, and having to, to see if they can push legislation through to make changes that are radically needed within, within the community in the five boroughs of Manhattan. That's correct, Kevin. Um, we, we understand tenant organizing is very important. Understanding that building by building, we want to make sure that you have repairs. We want to make sure that you have heat and hot water. All of those decent things that actually you deserve. Mm -hmm. they, they aren't things that, you know, are cherry on top policies. These are things that every human, especially in New York City, deserves. So we want to make sure that you have those things. But we don't want to do it on just an individual by building by building. That would take a lifetime and then some. Mm. So sometimes you have to create the macro policies that you were just uh, talking about earlier to actually kind of move a lot of things forward as opposed to just these incremental steps. And so while we're doing both, we want to make sure that everything is, again, being covered. So having that fight in, in City Hall and in Albany, as well as having those building by building fights with the landlords and making sure that those uh, micro things are also handled as well. So there's a reciprocity between all this, right? Yes. So you, you, you conduct 10 councils, you can conduct surveys, and you do, and you make presentations before rent guideline, the rent guideline boards. Yes. Um, so um, we do know your rights trainings for tenants. Um, these can be around housing court issues that tenants might be facing. This can be around um, what your landlord can or cannot tell you. Um, this can be um, that we know a lot of people um, when they don't know are taken advantage of, and so we want to make sure that you, as the tenant, have rights and know your rights. Um, and you show them through how to, how to form tenant associations. Correct, correct. And by forming tenant associations, that opens them up to legal representation through the city of New York's services. Correct, correct. So some of the work that we do does take on that legal ramifications that you were talking about, Kevin. We work with Manhattan Legal Services, NIMIC, HUD, uh, some of these other big housing uh, institutions here in the city. Um, and in relation, they do HP cases. Now, these aren't on an individual uh, a case by case, mm -hmm. but on a group action. And again, um, the reason why we're forming these tenant councils is important because we're working ourselves out of a job. We, at the end of the day, we want to build you up to be the best leader that you can be. Exactly. And that's really important. By taking care of the issues. Yes. And, and being able to point to that and be able to gather other people who, who are in need. Correct. And be able to help them. Correct. So. This, this is a city of 10, billion, 10 million people, excuse me. Yeah. 
we all going through something <laughs> similar. <laughs> that, that, that's for sure. <laughs> so, you've been uh, working on uh, some things that uh, kind of creatively, like what you know. You have um, things like the walk-in clinic and the newsletter. What, what, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, great question. So, uh, there are a few different ways that we're trying to just uh, build bridges all across the city. Um, with our walk-in clinics, which right now are in the Heights and Inwood, which are Upper Manhattan, mm -hmm. um, and we're going to start uh, uh, some more uh, this fall. So actually, be on the lookout for that. Um, if you want to uh, find out, make sure that um, you can either call our hotline or you can visit our website, metcouncilonhousing.org. Okay. Um, so definitely uh, find the information there. Um, but yes, the walk-in clinics are something that we're really um, uh, excited about. We also have a hotline that runs four days a week. So any tenant in New York City, if you're ha having a housing issue, please call the hotline. Um, we can answer. It, it is a great model of also, um, Kevin, I, I really want to big up the hotline. Uh -huh. It's a mutual aid model. So people who have gotten help, who have called the hotline, have gotten help. Some of the people who are still volunteers to this day love the information that they got from the call that they decided to continue that work. And so we've developed this mutual aid model where you're having tenants helping tenants, and there, that's great. There are people in the communities who don't really know where to go for help. Right. Right? Right. And the outreach that you're taking on now and under the programs that you're initiating and, 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 and overseeing um, to help benefit these people and get the word out. Correct. So. For every success that you have, the, again, there's a re reciprocity from those tenants to be able to show other people how to organize. I mean, it's, it's just like it's just like news. Like mm -hmm. when good news is spread, it spreads fast. If people are getting help in the city, they're going to tell other people who they got that help from. And so we really want to be a conduit of just that good re reciprocity that you were talking about, mm -hmm. because housing is an issue for everybody. Sure. You know? and, and, so, yeah. and, so, and some of these houses, you know, in rent stabilized or rent controlled uh, apartment dwellings, um, there's a lot of stuff that's not taken care of. Correct. Um, Correct. By the landlords. Correct. All right? Correct. So, you know, one person can, uh, can be going after the landlord and not getting anywhere, but by showing them how to form an association together, they can work in a, as a united front. Right. And then they have access, again, to greater legal services because of size. Correct. There, there's a saying, many hands make light work. And so that's something that we really want to emphasize. Like, we don't want you to have to fight a battle single by yourself. Um, that's a lot of money, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of energy, and that's only on that end. Meanwhile, you have a family, a job, those are other priorities that you also have to consider. And so what we want to help is with one uh, uh, asset a facet, excuse me, of just your life, and that's housing. If that is cool, a lot of other things I think will actually be subsided as well. As a matter of fact, the the, the motto for the organization is housing for people, not for profit. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, Kevin. <laughs> you said it perfectly. <laughs> okay. It's perfect. All right. So let's go into some of the, uh, uh, like, the legislative aspect of it that we spoke about before, we said that we would come back to. Correct. All right? So there, there's a reason why sometimes things can't change and, and they need, um, and, and why the, why the uh, Met Council is split into two parts, so that you can make recommendations for change of legislative yes. change. Yes. And, that, and that's because of? Well, we think there's a need for an inside and outside game, or an inside strategy and an outside strategy. And what I mean by inside, inside is when we're talking with elected officials, when we're having those conversations in City Hall in Albany, we consider that inside. So you're going to various conferences? And, 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 and things were making contact with other agencies, Exa city, exactly. city agencies. But then the outside game is the galvanizing of folks, is the galvanizing of tenants, is to make sure that we're stronger together on the outside. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we need these two philosophies, if you're an elected official, you see votes. Correct. At, at every two, four years, or maybe there's a special election, you see votes. Mm -hmm. If you're not seeing constituents from your neighborhood, those aren't votes. Right. But when we do bring that outside presence of people with that electoral power, and then you see the problems that they're going through, and you're not able to meet their needs, mm -hmm. it's time for you to go. 
Yeah. And so that's kind of the relationship that we're developing. So it's the inside and outside game are very important. One is not is is just as important as the other, and it creates a formidable strategy for getting some real great wins. Um, we ha we need to be more successful in that, uh, just because I think right now we've been too much on the inside, and we do need to start galvanizing folks on the outside again. Well, I, I can see that because being on the inside is is really because of the way that the system is set up. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. All right. The legislative aspect is from the state, and the state makes the has makes the legislation in regard to a, a lot of housing. Correct. Right. Correct. So, right. so uh, yeah, I, I, and this is, uh, I, again, I'm originally from D.C., and we have the same issue in D.C. We don't have representation in the nation's capital because we're, we're not a state. Mm -hmm. um, and New York is the same way where folks or elected officials in Ithaca and Syracuse are telling New York City how, how things are run. Um, and so um, th that also creates uh, uh, barriers or creates more time for things to actually get passed because there's more people to actually uh, talk to. There's more folks who um, have to sway and coax over to the legislation that you're trying to pass. And so that does create a lot of... So I, I think it's important that, that we also bring out from what you told me that um, in this regard, as we just talked about, the state really controls the budgets that, that would come down and basically tells New York City what what it what it's going to do and what it's not going to do. Yes. Okay. But we don't have for folks at home. We don't have home rule. <laughs> no, we do as, not. As the word in, yes. in 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 New York. All right. Yes. As 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 Larry has explained, you know, because a lot of people or representatives from other parts of New York State are are telling New York City what they can have and can't have. Correct. All right. Correct. But you also said that you're not looking for it to change. No, um, right, right now, um, the more important thing, are, uh, instead of home rule right now, is to get people making sure that they have found solid foundations. Mm -hmm. We understand that uh, COVID-19 just happened and that really put a wrench in a lot of people's lives, whether it was financial, they might have lost a family member or a friend, and or just the mental aspect of, of just the hardship that we went through as a pandemic. And we're still recovering. Mm. And so making sure that people have solid foundations, that they're not being evicted and just thrown on the street, are more of the priority needs right now. Now, yes, in, in the most ideal world, I would love to have home rule now, just so New Yorkers have more of a, a grasp on what they want for the city. Right. But I think the state is also under, under need, and so I don't want to forget about folks in, in Westchester, in, in, in uh, upstate, um, I don't want to forget about those as well, but th that is the priority at the moment. Mm -hmm. So you try to stay out of the politics except for the fact of making recommendations for who you can endorse. Yes, um, we, we're, we're making sure that, again, the outside strategy, making sure that our tenant associations are strong, that organizing is strong is our priority for Met Council at the moment, that you are absolutely right, right Kevin. Okay. so. Tell us what you're doing in the digital world. I mean, it's, 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 I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, the way that, again, Darius's uh, reach is, is is pretty broad right now as an executive director. <laughs> okay, he still has his organizer, organizer roots that he has to <laughs> that he has to communicate to people yeah. and be able to show them and lead them. But on on the other side, he also has budgets that are allocated <laughs> for various things that take up his time. Correct. Right? Correct. So, again, you know, becoming a, an executive director for a, a major uh, organization working within New York City is quite an accomplishment for a 34-year-old. And, you know, I think he's got the power and the energy to, to really go with that dynamic. So. I, I appreciate that, Kevin. Um, and to answer your question, so, so something that uh, I started, uh, created at Met Council was a digital organizer position. Okay. And the reason why I call it a digital organizer position as opposed to comms, I really want to focus on a, a model of online to offline organizing. 
Okay. This is where young folks are. This is where more folks of color um, are in terms of where they get their news, their information for mm -hmm. just every day. Um, whether that be Twitter, Instagram, whatever the new Snapchat, there's always something every six months, a new <laughs> app that seems like that's been created. Right. And so I really want to focus on making sure that young folks also know about housing issues. They are going to be paying rent soon if they're not already. If they're not already helping their parents pay the bills. Uh, we want to make sure that they know what's going on in the housing world. Oh, um, and, we, and we don't want them to just be cool. I liked it. We want them to come out. At the end of the day, that is the goal for the digital organizer. We, the online to offline model works by starting online but then having you come offline in person. We're able to fellowship, we're able to build, we're able to organize in that way. And so that's something I'm really excited about. Are you able to uh, outreach into the, into the city worker field or any, or any of those, like through them? Um, so that maybe you could do some things like this and make, let, uh, let it be known that it's available? Yeah, it, it, it's not something that has been on our radar um, just because historically, and, and just so f those who don't know, Met Council's been around since the late 50s. So we've okay. been, we're the oldest citywide tenant organization in New York. Wow. Um, so, and yes, we have that mantle. We, we celebrate that mantle. Um, we started in 58, 50, some would say 58, others would say 59, but we like to say 58. Okay. Um, and so our model has always been tenant associations, and we've, we haven't uh, strided from that model. But this is what you're suggesting isn't a bad idea, actually. Yeah, because some of these city workers work, live, in, <laughs> right. live in housing in New York City. And just working with, in labor and housing, those should be hand in hand. So working with more unions and, mm -hmm. and things of that nature. It, it, it's not a, a far-fetched idea. It's actually a very common idea. We just need to okay. do the process and get those conversations started. Right. So what are the big, some of the big successes that, I know you've only been with, within uh, the organization for <laughs> how long? Uh, it's actually be my 10th month. Yeah. Okay. So now you've had a chance to like, kind of sit back and exam examine the plane. Yeah. And um, s see what you can do. But what, are, there, are there any current things that are going on now that would be important to let people know to give a better idea again of what you do? I mean, yeah. we've been talking about it. So, so, great question, Kevin. So actually, uh, September 9th, we're, uh, which is a Saturday, we're going to be doing a big annual member assembly. Really? This is where we're going to be able to roll out a lot of the campaigns that we're doing for the 20, rest of the 2023-2024 year. Okay. Um, it's going to be at St. Peter's Church in Manhattan, uh, which is, uh, I don't have the address off the top of my head, but St. Peter's Church, Manhattan, yeah, you can find it. And that's again when? Uh, September 9th, um, it will start at 10.30 a.m. Okay. Yes. Um, we, ex we expect to have 100 plus people come out. Um, we're going to have some keynote speakers. We're going to have some political education workshops. Um, we Again, we just want to focus on education. So um, we won't have elected officials or any of like that be there. Okay. We want it to focus on the organizing. And so I'm really excited about that. Um, this has been a dream of mine. Um, I've been putting this together for about four or five months. Uh -huh. um, so I'm really excited about this. Um, I, I am just... Uh, Really excited about the, the path forward for Matt Council. And so just really starting on a solid foot, I'm, I'm, I cannot wait. That's great. Yeah. So how many, uh, I guess over a period, like what, how many uh, tenant associations have been created through, through, through Matt Council on housing? Yeah, so, so back in uh, the 70s, 80s, we actually, uh, to, to kind of put it in, a, in a, a cool way, I, I like to say we were like Starbucks. You could see us on every corner in New York, mm -hmm. uh, where at any given moment we had about 30 or 40 buildings simultaneously going on rent strike. Wow. Um, and that was back in our heyday. Yeah. Now, I, I say that lightly because I actually think in this in this new chapter we can do better than that and I'm really looking forward to the, to that work but that takes time that takes a lot of building um, I do want to say that when I started back in October there were only three of us on staff there are nine nine of us so okay. we're growing internally to be able to meet the capacity that New York City needs um, and we're going to continue growing but it takes time also to get to keep the funding right it does so it does um, where is a lot of funding coming from for the work that you do? Yeah, so we do get some discretionary funds from elected officials. Okay. Um, that helps with our hotline work and some of just the minor work that we're doing. And they're able to do that in, in the state 
comes in the Correct. Uh, but program. that's a state as and city. So uh, that's on both levels. So state gotcha. and city okay. um, for discretionary funding. Um, we do get some uh, government grants as well um, that help us more on the tenant organizing front. Um, and then we also have some uh, private money. Um, we do collect funds from dues paying members as well. Okay. Um, and yeah, yeah, so um, those are the buckets that we do get uh, our, our funding from, um, and including uh, HPD as well. I, if I didn't mention that, yes, they also do um, fund us as well. All right. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty large scale to work in New York City, and there's only so much that you can do. Uh, we'd like to emphasize that you know if you're in a rent stabilized or rent controlled building and you know if of a certain size you have a problem you may not be able to help in or in the organization but your hotline yes would be able to to communicate things that that those people could you, do you that is I want to just reiterate what Kevin says he is a hundred percent right call us we can help we might not be able to or, to do a tenant organizing in the building if it doesn't meet certain parameters but we do not turn you away we will find you another organization we will do our best to make sure that you are fully supported in what you need going forward with your housing needs mm -hmm. yeah and that, 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 that's important so you know when people think of housing in New York City there's a lot of abandoned buildings too right yes yes uh, but that's not that's a different <laughs> <laughs> the different pig to poke. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, but but if if, if I may, sure. Um, again, just coming out of COVID nineteen, we saw a lot of uh, New Yorkers who are working switch to this hybrid model where they don't go into the office as much as as they used to, mm -hmm. and we actually think this is actually a vital way of kind of co course correcting some of the housing needs. If the buildings are already empty. Guess what we can do? We can rent them out. We can make them uh, apartments. These are these are actually viable things. Right. We shouldn't have people, especially New Yorkers, who are giving their their hard energy. They're they're working here. They're doing everything they're supposed to do to then go home or or go to a shelter or have to go to the street. That shouldn't be a feasible option for anybody. Okay. Yeah. So Darius. Yes. What do you want to be in two years? <laughs> <laughs> um, in two, that's a great question, Kevin. In two years, I would like Met Council. I was, I'm still going to be the executive director for Met Council. Okay. I would like us to be a more formidable organization all across the five boroughs um, and just really grow not only our capacity in terms of our tenant associations, but also our capacity in terms of the inside game, in terms of Albany and City Hall, to really get some great housing And I hope you have a lot of success there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, I think that you're the man with the energy to bring it. I appreciate you, I, Kevin. I really do. Thank you. So, folks, uh, before we wrap up, we just, again, want to let you know Darius Khalil Gordon, Executive Director of, of Research, uh, Met Council Research and Funding, and the good work that he's doing on Met Council for Housing. We'll put the number up on the screen. Yes. We ask that you please give the, the organization a call. Yes. And they will be there to help you always. Excellent. Very nice to meet you, Darren. Thank you, Kevin. Thank okay. you. Appreciate it.